exactly. our meeting to order. It's 10 o'clock. Welcome to the Town Council's Financial Oversight Committee meeting of May 8th, 10 a.m. in the Library Conference Room. Uh, is anyone taping the meeting other than LCAT? Okay. Um, <coughs> have you had a chance to read the minutes of April 18th? Yes. Any comments on that? I don't no. have any. Everyone else has read them. <coughs> Jim had proposed a few changes. April 16th. April 18th. April 18th. I said April 18th. The 16th ones were approved. The 16th those were the ones that I had the comments Yeah, on. and those have been posted on the website yeah. with the attachments that we referred okay. to. Okay. So, okay. so this is for the 18th. Okay. Um, Correct. Do I have a motion to... You got one correction? Yeah. No, I'm saying, oh. I'm, I'm clarifying the 18th is the correct I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah, the 16th have been approved. So, do I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes um, as I'll, presented? I'll make a motion to approve the um, minutes of April 18th, 2019, um, as written. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I had as number four on today's um, docket that the tentative meeting was scheduled for Superintendent Feeney. However, this is his first day back to work after having a couple of days off. He is coming in on Monday morning. Uh, he'll, he will meet with us, and in addition to that, uh, after Bruce, we will be meeting with the um, emergency dispatch director. Uh, I asked you all to um, go over the Collins Center job study and read it, and um, if you had any comments in that regard. Pretty boilerplate, in my opinion, what we received. And uh, the scale, the hourly scale, didn't really uh, lend itself to <laughs> Moving it to translating <laughs> it to <laughs> annual, yes, yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. I know. yeah. But uh, unless you wanted to spend the next three weeks doing <laughs> that, <laughs> right? Unless you could get access to the spreadsheet. Right? Okay. Um, item number six on the agenda is to continue discussions on the light item of budgets that were previously set aside. However, we have uh, Chief Morissette here, um, who has offered his time today because he's going to be away next week and I don't think it'll be timely to discuss it with him. He said there was one item. Um, in quick conference with the committee chief, uh, we are questioning the deputy chief position. Understandable. It's um, something brand new. With the growth of the department in the past uh, few years, we went from uh, a staff of seven career to, um, to eight seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And then since then, we have now hired 12 additional we're a staff of 20, working 24 hours a day. Um, uh, ultimately, when the last group of guys gets out of the academy, we'll have five per group um, that work uh, a 24-hour shift. They're off for a couple of days and back on for 24, okay. and then back off for four days. Um, my, my issue as management is I don't have continuity with a position in there uh, Monday through Friday that can um, the administrative detail duties are, are just with the ambulance and with just running the fire department in general. It's huge. Before it was easy because I had somebody there that was part of that seven day a week shift, but they were always there during the day, at least three days of the week. Yeah. Now they're not. And potentially, like my inspector is there on Tuesday, but he won't be back in shift for the week until probably the following Wednesday because uh -huh. he'll work the weekend and then he comes back in on that Wednesday two days later. So um, it, it's very difficult to schedule some stuff, and it's, very, it's just harder to manage. Yeah. Um, so the position of the deputy was, um, and to, to bring it to that level to the deputy also takes it out of the union. So when it comes to management and administrative de duties and details when it comes to personnel, I can have somebody that's not in the union. In the past, we've had discipline issues. Not a lot, but we've had discipline issues where actually the captain that was filing the complaint was actually the union president. And okay. it makes it cumbersome when you take it to certain levels, yeah. when you have a union president who's supposed to be 
representing the member, but he can't represent the member because he's actually the individual. Um, so it's 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 cumbersome. So that's a it's a step I, I would love to have for the department. Yeah. I know when I put my plan in front of the council several years ago about this whole transition, it wasn't there. Yeah. Um, it was something that we thought we could get by without for a few more years. Yeah. Um, but it's just it, it's really a, a task that needs to need I need help with. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you asked for the position for how many months? Uh, three months. Um, initially, I asked for it for ten months, understanding the um, the budget constraints for the town, uh, and I, I I get it. I'm a taxpayer in town, and I understand it. Nobody likes to see your taxes go up, um, but um, we all like to see the services we get. So, um, trying to <coughs> take, it's going to take several months, maybe even longer, to work with the town manager to come, to finalize the job description. The one I submitted with my budget proposal was a draft. Okay. Um, that the town manager basically she saw it. Um, I'm sure she there's some stuff that the town manager would want to make sure is in there um, just to cover all the bases. Yeah. And it's like we got to work through that. Uh, it's already negotiated with the union, so we don't need to worry about that piece of it. Um, it's not a union position. They understand that, um, and it's not a guarantee to one of those guys in the union. We can open it up outside um, to bring in talent from elsewhere if we if we're not comfortable with anybody from inside applying. Okay. Um. I have a question, Christine. Yes, if that's okay. Do the chair. Uh, so, if, and they understand there's more more full time firefighters, right? But there appears to be four fire captains. Correct. So you have a, a pretty good breadth of people directly under you. Uh, you're not you're not able to delegate more am, of some of those duties to one or, or more but of those they're not, captains. If they're, if they're there today. They're not there for several days down the road. They all have their specific tasks. Uh, one of them's the EMS coordinator currently. Yeah. One of them is a training officer. Um, one takes care of the, the, the um, mm -hmm. our our equipment side of it. So they all have their specific tasks. But there's stuff that as you go up the scale in the, in the, in the station, there's, there's more stuff that needs to be done on a daily basis. Um, and the, the more particularly the, the inspecting piece of it. Um, do I want the deputy chief to be the, the full-time inspector? Absolutely not. But do I want him assisting the inspector um, on those days that the inspector can't? Um, you don't want to be the, the person who calls up and uh, your closing is today. I forgot to get my inspection done. It's my fault. I messed up, but I need help from the fire department. And we do our best. I, I go out on smoke detector inspections. Um, we'll send a crew out if we have to. But we're, we went from 500 runs a year when I started. We're, we're projected right now to do 3,400 runs a year. R runs are uh, incident, UNS? incident calls. Mm -hmm. um, probably 70% of those are EMS calls, um, which either ties up an engine company or it ties up a <coughs> an ambulance. Um, so the acronym DMS. What does it mean? Um, emergency medicals. Okay. Emergency <laughs> medicals. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. EMS. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we ran. We started running the, the fire um, service-based ambulance. Yeah. Um, last July, and we went 24 hours, December 23rd. Yeah. And uh, it's been very successful. We, um, we we get a lot of compliments and a lot of um, praise for what we're doing and, and how we're doing <laughs> it. Um, like, um, I I did mention to the um, council. Um, next year, I'm, I'm going to. I'm probably going to come back once we have the revenue because that comes out of the ambulance revenue account. Right. I'm going to ask for another ambulance. I'm going to ask for four more firefighters yeah. um, because we are we are a two and a half ambulance town um, easily. Really? And, um, and and our goal um, with the council, the town manager, and myself, and actually the police department, who Jeff was was just as involved as I was. Um, <coughs> we had struggles with AMR. Yeah. Um, our, our private ambulance service. And yeah. We're still having struggles with AMR. Uh, you know, I'm getting directives from them every day. Uh, the town manager and I met with their new director, um, regional director, a couple weeks ago um, because the other guy just wasn't servicing his customers the way he was supposed to. He, and ultimately, he was sending money back that was supposed to be put into hiring people and to upgrading equipment and that. And um, he ended up losing his job. So we have a new person in place there, but they're still they're struggling to get staff and equipment. And um, we're 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 missing out on some of their, our services. Hamden's missing out because we have a shared contract with Hamden. Hamden's missing out with some of their services. So um, we haven't gone to Hamden mutual aid for an ambulance. Uh, we have once, but it's not a regular thing. Which you know, and that's all the ambulance services <coughs> around here know. Um, if, if it's a mass casualty, give us a call. We're going. Yeah. But if it's if it's you need a you need an ambulance and you can't get 
ag <coughs> company come over, somebody else come over. Well, yeah, but don't put us first on the list because we are we're, we only have one ambulance for our town and our town's priority. Yeah. Good so, thought there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just still had a maybe two more questions. Uh, Chief, I, I'm still not quite sure I follow with the four captains. Uh, yep. it's, it's that not one of them is actually there. The same person isn't there Monday through Friday, yep. 9 to 5. Is that the yep. issue that you yeah. have? So they work the exact same schedule as the firefighters. Mm -hmm. They're on for 24 hours, they're off for, 20, for 48, on for 24, and then they're off for four days, to, uh, 96 hours. Yeah. Um, so continuity with, between me and them, Trying to trying to get projects done, um, just this whole uh, EMS project. There's been a lot of steps in play, and it was good at the beginning because they, they were <coughs> a different shift. But now they're 24 hours. It's hard to keep that continuity. I have a couple of great guys. They put a lot of time in on their own. You know, uh, I'm getting emails in Texas. I know they're working, you know, more than their their 42 hours a week that they're paid for. Um, but it's I need somebody that's in the regular position. And if you look at our surrounding communities, <coughs> Wilbraham has a deputy in line. Wilbraham has an inspector that also works Monday through Friday. Longmeadow, the same thing. They have a deputy in line, they have an inspector. Um, in our community, we are, we are, like I said, we're projected to do more runs than both of those towns are. More EMS runs and more fire runs. So, second part, yep. I guess, of my question is, so if, if it's, it sounds like it's more the administrative it's kind all of stuff. The administrative right. stuff yeah. So, could you do that by having more administrative assistance as opposed to a deputy chief? Yeah, it, I, I, I could do it. It's, somebody has to have the fire knowledge. It's got to be somebody has to be fire based. Um, I have an administrative assistant, which um, she, she's awesome, um, and she's always looking for more work. Yeah, um, but. The, some of the stuff I need done is, is more, it's, it's, it's management, it's, it's a management um, task. It's not a, not just administrative, it's a, it's a mix of those two. Um, so yeah, discipline, uh, coaching, um, with EMS there, there's all kinds of uh, mentoring that needs to go on. So, you know, like I say, if you look at in any, any structure, uh, you know, across the region, everybody has that. You know, they they go, they go they'll, they'll be. It's, it looks funny on an organizational chart. Yeah, it definitely looks funny. It looks funny on an organizational yeah, chart. I mean, but no be, one would let me get away with it. There'll be assistant chief, and then there'll be a deputy chief. Then there'll be a district chief, yeah. and then underneath those, it doesn't have that full pyramid. It, it goes and it spikes up. Um, and a lot of some police departments are similar too, where they have a. a, a, yeah, no, or I, a I looked chief. at your table and I'm there. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not your traditional pyramid or, organizational chart. It really isn't. Um, would would this be a new hire, or would you uh, promote someone to that position? I have guys in house that are qualified, um, and I, I basically, I, I, again, that would be a conversation I don't have with a town manager. But I, I would definitely open it up to the inside, and depending on how many people apply, to give make sure the town gets the biggest bang for the buck. Yeah. Um, if we only had one, it's not really fair to the town. Let's let's make sure we're looking at all our options. I would open it up if we had all four captains apply. Yeah. Again, yeah. I'm I'm, co I'm confident with all four of my captains. Um, I don't think they're all going to apply. I, I know some of them are you, um, they're still young. They want to run through the door putting fires out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I wish I could still do that, but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they yell at me. But yeah, um, that, that's not my job. And, and that's that's another piece of the puzzle too. Is if I'm not around. And, and something does happen, it's nice to have that extra level outside in front of the house, even if I am around. Um, operationally, when you, when you, when you fight a fire, um, the incident command structure places different people at different levels within that structure. I'm command, the deputy chief would be operations. And my captains can actually do what, they're, what captains are supposed to be doing. They're, they're managing their men, either interior or exterior, whatever they're doing. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I have a, a couple of questions, Chief. Yep. Um, first is, we had a deputy chief's position. Why was that eliminated? Our, so our deputy chief's position was a um, was a union position, um, and he was a line officer. He he actually rode the fire truck. He wasn't a he didn't he didn't ride the, in the car. Basically, he was he was he was he was in charge of the group. So I had a, I had a captain, and I had a deputy chief one was in charge of one group one was in charge of the other group and so 
they basically had both sets of responsibilities. Um, and when we when we made the change um, to the, the most recent contract, the union had wanted to level the playing field so the deputy chief and the captain was, was the same position because they all had the same responsibilities at that point. And he didn't, he didn't, um, so the position, when, when we changed it to the captain, we, what we did is we, we didn't, we didn't bump the captain's pay up. We actually bumped the deputy chief's pay down. He actually took a, a cut in pay to go back down to that position. But he was, he was okay with it. He, he personally didn't, didn't want to be the deputy chief. Some of the pressure I was putting on him was, you know, you're a deputy chief, you need to you act like a deputy chief. You need to, you know, you need to manage. And, and it's hard because he, he, he's a union member and he was, he was actually, you know, one of the officers in the union. And, you know, he's got to boss these guys around at a management level. And it, it, it gets, it gets um, yeah. awkward at times. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah and the, the, another question would be uh, with the funding that we're going to see from, uh, or actually the money's made from the ambulance service, there's, is there a way to pay for that out of that fund? Um, not this year, um, yeah. but going forward, what I would what I would suggest is, depending on how it ends up next year, it, it roll some of the current full time firefighters. You can't. I, I don't think we can just fully justify that full position being paid for by EMS. But if, if his part of his roles are EMS coordinator or overseeing EMS, we could we could we could we could use part of that money from the ambulance because it's got all that money from the ambulance has to go somewhere towards EMS. Yeah. So if we're saying 25% of his time he's working on EMS management, we could use some of that money. Um, I don't know, I don't believe we're going to have money, enough money to fund more, really more than what we've already projected for this year's budget for the ambulance fund. The other question is you stated uh, three months uh, for the actual salary. Yep. So when would that job actually start? Uh, April 1st. Right, so between now and April 1st, we wouldn't have enough funds accrued through the we ambulance? Might. We might. Um, we're, we're, we're pulling in money um, every week. Um, I don't know what the rules are. We can't budget for it today. Um, like when, we, when we do the budget on, when, when the council finally has their final vote on the budget, whatever's in that ambulance revenue account, we can budget for it. If it's not, if I, I know we're going to have money by, I, I know we're going to have money by January that would fund this position. Um, but I can't budget for that right. yet. If, if, can I come back? I don't know if, that, if, yeah. that's a, if that's an option. If, if it's an option to come back and say, uh, you know, I'd really like to order my ambulance and I'd really like to get this, you know, deputy chief in position. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. Well, that's always an option because that's what our town manager has done in the past. Uh, with new positions, they don't always have to start in the cycle of a budget uh, year. So, right. if you have a, uh, if we have funding for a new position at a later point, then it would make sense to maybe look at it again at that point. Right. What we're trying to do and what we're trying to balance is oh, I know. Right. A, a huge offset yeah. um, and a, a huge overage in our budget right now. Mm -hmm. And w I think we're no one here is going to disagree that you've been doing a great job. Yeah. And I like to applaud you for that personally. Thank you. Uh, I second that. And uh, you brought that department from, I don't want to call it the Stone Age, but up to modern age. Yeah. Uh, you've really done an outstanding job. Uh, it's nice. I hear a lot of positive things from the folks in town now, knowing uh, insurance rates are coming down. We now have a 24 hour uh, you know, fire department, we have ambulance service. So you've really done a lot. And we all like to continue to support all your efforts. but. Right. There's also a, no, I get a, a it. point I, where I get it. It, the money has become an issue. Maybe that's the way to do it. I, I, off the top of my head, I think the number was twenty-six thousand dollars for yeah. that quarter. Quarter and, plus um, benefits. So if that comes out, I, I don't know what your number you're trying to get to. Um, yeah, I'm sure that's not enough. No, <laughs> <laughs> every little bit helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's not enough. And then I come back. I, I, I tell you, in the back of my mind, I was always going to try and come back and at least try and order the ambulance this year, but I can't ask for that today because I don't have the money in there today. Right. But if I can order that ambulance, say January, and have it in the station in April or May and start using it, I think that's a home run for all of us. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Okay.
Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for allowing me to come in today. <coughs> oh, it. absolutely. Uh, it. Glad to accommodate you and yeah. hope you enjoy your time yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, have a nice trip. Enjoy the grandkids. <laughs> <too much>, <laughs> um, if anybody's got any questions, you know, I'm always available email by cell phone. Um, okay. So if anybody wants to talk, I'm there. All right. Very I'll good. wait till you're on oh. like the eighth hole or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be on the um, what is it, Thunder Mountain or something like oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or no, I'll probably be with the grandkids on the teacups. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, please, call me. Me. <laughs> please call me. Please call me. Please call me. Please take a picture if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd like to see. That. Like a little selfie. Ride. That would be. Great. You want the dumbbell ride? Can I get, if I bring the dumbbell ride picture? Oh, can I get my gift? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say yes for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that what they call that the magic pictures or something like that. They got some deal down there. My oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, that would change that chart that we got, Jim, from uh, from Sarah uh, on the position requests. Well, I was just looking uh, the. Because we got the salary plugged in at the amount. At, at the full amount. Right. Uh, and if it's, I, I noticed in his budget, he did have 26664 right. but that would be plus the benefits. And benefits would be for part of the year, so we would rely on Sarah once again uh, to crunch that number. Well, they, I, I think it's incorporated in the revised budget that the town manager presented. So I was just looking at the draft, which had the 12-month full-time, I think, and the revised uh, town manager recommendations. I'm not sure that's not an assumption. What's that? Is that an assumption? or that's? Well, I believe she said that the revised one included the partial, the partial year as opposed to the full year. And uh, so I was just looking at it. looks like a $103,000 difference, uh, a reduction. So the police, the fire budget was originally 387439 yep. increase. And, and then the, the recommended budget by the town manager, the increase is 284 175 so it's about a hundred and three thousand dollar so it would have to yeah, decrease so that kind of reflects it would we position. would assume that it would reflect that OPEP responsibility yeah. I mean it's still a 19 percent increase in yeah. the budget uh, but well that that again is I think it's a salary line item mm -hmm. okay Mark it for further discussion Okay, back to the agenda. Um, I see the rec department is here. We might as well take advantage of their time. They're here. Um, I don't think anything stuck out in your budget to us. It was kind of uh, looking, yes. And But we do have one question. Do you know how much of the area of the Pine Knoll parking lot is going to be paved? It's the upper level only. So you've got, there's three parking lots, and it's yeah. the top one. It's just the top one. Correct. Okay. They're, they're going to, um, I talked to Tom Christensen, and they are going to, if you go up, there's a spot right at the top that washes really bad. Oh, yeah. So they are going to try to, um, uh, we're, we were going to do a little, like bump it out a little bit more. We put it, pulled it in just a little bit more so we can do that corner. Good. I, out. I went up there, I think, last week sometime, and I said, how is a handicapped van ever going to get up here? Right. Um, it, yeah, it's washed out pretty badly. Right. So I was hoping they were going to regrade it before. Yeah. DBW is really good in the summer. We had a lot of rain last summer, and they were up yeah. there all the time, smoothing it back out after the rain. That's a real problem. So, uh, but if they put, they're also going to try to, I don't, I don't want to say lip, but just enough of a curve. To yeah. burn. A burn. A burn. A burn. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, not that cars would drag, but then maybe it, we can deflect some of that. So redirect. Yeah, redirect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. yeah that, I think that was part of the question I, I had asked too. Uh, is there a, a way to just create uh, an access ramp uh, for the handicap so that we don't have to 
uh, spend the uh, 55, I think, approximately thousand dollars to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were discussing creating a strip, uh, but another question came from that, which was, where does it lead to? So, <laughs> it, it, although we're going to have a great place for the handicapped to get off, is the path to wherever they need to go accessible to them? Or by them. No, that's a good question, and, and you're correct. I mean, if they get out in the parking lot on a strip, they're still going to have to navigate the, rest the of field it. to get to the field. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not just for chairs. It's also for you know. Um, Walking and yeah, canes, sure. Canes and, yes, exactly. So, yeah, um, yeah the, the whole area is a challenge for accessibility. That's yeah. for sure. Well, but you, you have the drive up on the right hand side of the pool that also allows access to the pool area, That's doesn't correct. it? Yeah, we had a so I, if I had a wheelchair, I yes. could get pushed up there and mm -hmm. get into the pool? We had a woman that was recovering from hip surgery, and that's exactly what she did. Her daughter yeah. pulled up, turned around, let her off right at the pool gate, right. and then the pool is fully accessible. Right. Uh, okay. But I mean, to the field, I mean, I don't know what you do about that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the other yeah. part of the question was, I, I mean, we work, and, and all of us, I, I would hope, work in the best interest of the town of East Long Meadow. Uh, one of the last flyers I saw where they were showing fees mm -hmm. showed a five dollar upcharge for outside the town residents. It's, I think, in my opinion, I think, and I, I think we had a consensus. Uh, look at, is, is that, a, is that? That's I mean, I go all other towns and they don't allow me in. Number one, or they allow me in, but at a much higher fee. Great. So, so I, you're looking at the swimming fee. <laughs> Whatever fees are charged okay. for attending our camp, I mean, these yeah. East Long Meadow taxpayers are paying for it. Yeah, but they so I don't want to offset Springfield or other surrounding towns' mm -hmm. uh, children from coming there. I don't want to stop them from coming there, but I like them to come there and pay their fair share. Great, but the fee is 15 for everything except for the day pass. And the day pass is only 5 because that's a 50% markup. And we don't have a lot of... Oh, they pass at the pool. At the pool okay. only, right. But if you look at the brochure, everything, there's a 15% difference, I mean, $15 difference on programs. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to uh, look at that again uh, yeah. from a different perspective to say, for these services that we're providing to outside the town folks, is there a way to justify that cost? Because we're paying for this yeah. in, in town, and, and I'm not... So you, you know. would like, I can bring it up to the Red Commission to increase that 15 to more? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Well, well, it'd be nice if we had a way to offset some of our cost yeah. and, and not just I, I charge just, a small upfee. Yeah, I think just looking at it, revisiting it, hmm. and uh, however you analyze it, um, you know, what is the cost per participant and so forth, if there's, and I think you just said you don't get that great number of, out of town res you know right. participants right. Um, like in the swim program mm -hmm. say for the what <coughs> would you guess if you had to take a guesstimate for the we camp, won't hold you to the camp is yeah yes the camp is more than any of the other programs but then it's we're, we're only I, I mean I could I should have brought that with me I could pull it up but we're only talking a dozen maybe at the most it's not it's still not a lot yeah um, I mean out of town cor participants correct. yeah right we did we've summers um, Munson Springfield yeah right but and with our other sports especially our travel sports you have to have a waiver so if someone <coughs> wanted to come to Long Met from Long Meadow for instance they would have to have a waiver from their town to join our league so there's some league there's not a lot of crossing when it comes to okay. the sports. Okay. Like we had, we did, we had <coughs> to go to Springfield for a premier team because we don't offer that in our town. But as the rec director, I had to write saying yes, I agreed to let him play in another town. Okay. So the sports is a lot. The, it, it's controlled. There's lot. rules for exchange, yeah. evidently. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And as Christine said, that's your expertise. So we rely on you to look mm -hmm. outside yeah. the box to see if there's ways yeah. to make some income. Yeah, yeah. just you a know? suggestion. Th yeah. Not to charge the taxpayers of East Lamella. Correct. Right. Um, and I will say the camp, we could have accommodated more last year. So it's not we weren't displacing any East Lamella residents. Oh, good. This year we've added a, dis a different camp, as you saw in the brochure. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, okay. it was a very nice brochure. Yes. Yeah. Complimentary. Um, Jordy. Jordy. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it, it was very, very professional, yeah, right. very well. <laughs> okay. Other than that, uh, you know, we've looked at your budget, and it's one of the ones that we said that pile's okay. Yeah. So um, we thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have, I know you, I don't know if you. We did get one. Yeah. It was, it was very yes. professionally looking and, and, and well done. Okay. Jordy, sure. very thank nice. You. Did you say you brought some? I did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you threw it away. <laughs> Pass them out. We'll keep them at your house. <laughs> I think you you received copies off the machine, so they went. To yeah, the I, these look much more. Uh, yeah, they are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Friendly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, I'll take one too. Here you go. Uh, Thank one. you. Um, I have one. Yeah, I, I have yeah. one. They're at the library. Yeah, any yeah. place around town, we've got some visitors yeah. who are really yeah, good about letting us put yeah. them out. So. You got okay. Sarah. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just want to clarify that for all of those recreation programs, that those don't cost the taxpayers any. Right. It goes into the it's revolving all fund, right? participants that are paying because it's all in the revolving. Right. So it's not impacting uh, the taxpayers right. directly. It's only their participant in that program. So but, user but, fees. Right, but the user yeah. fees are not structured fairly. In my opinion. Right, but you just said to be fair to the taxpayers, and I just want yeah. to clarify that it's you mean the participants, not. But the taxpayers are paying for this fifty-five thousand dollars paving. But that yes, yes, yeah. Okay. No. Did we? I'll ask the committee. Did we? Can walk back? I'll give you a ride. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, come back. Oh, no, no, did you guys join together? <laughs> no, we're booked. Uh, uh, do we have we any might be able to take care of this quickly. Right. We can bring this back to order, please. Yeah. Oh, yes. She said the truck I'll ask the committee. <laughs> did we have... <laughs> I'm getting a little impatient. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, did we have any questions? I don't remember any questions I, I concerning we the, were council okay on the Council on Aging. I thought we were okay with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I you so had too. a question about the revolving account as to what the balance was going to be used for and the plan for it. Um, it's not anything that's impacting the 2020 budget, I don't think, but... Um, it was a can, I, can I just address the revolving... Because I know it keeps coming up year after year. Yeah. Um, so... And I need to give you a little history. 13 years ago when I started, the revolving account was used for everything. So all of our grants went into the revolving account. Um, all of the donations, all of the seniors, if they gave money to go to something specific or programs in general, that went into that account. Now, it, so it was at a much higher level. It was at a, actually, was it 100,000 so? Which, um, was enough because our nutrition program was in there. So that was used for the money coming in and the money going out. No other accountant was really doing what they, I don't want to say doing what they should have been doing, but when Sarah came in, she took those programs and put them in separate accounts so it wasn't a part of the revolving account. So there is an excess of money in there, more than we're spending each year. However, that money is going to help. We pay two positions. Um, we partially pay two positions out of the revolving account, which otherwise would be going to the town. So that revolving account does not reflect what the taxpayers pay. So when we did that, we started at a zero balance. So there was still money that so much wasn't designated or it went to these nutrition programs several years ago. So it kind of built up that way. That was how the former director did it. And, that, and quite frankly, that's how the other accountants did it. But Sarah, that was an advantage for us when Sarah came in because now we could really designate, you know, what was coming in, what was coming out, and but to take that money because I know there's been some discussions to take that money and put it back into uh, to give it back to the general fund. In my opinion, ethically, I don't think that's the best thing to do because people, those programs were funded through that, and there is still money. But the easiest way again was to zero d zero those out and start. On July 1st um, I, I think that it to to respect those who either donated or gave money for certain programs whether it was five years ago or ten years ago or even longer that was the intent of the money going in there so we, we don't treat it like a slush fund but it absolutely helps with expense accounts because what we'd be expending 
and right now it's at 20,000, we would be having to maintain that level of service and to grow with the growing population of seniors. We'd be going to you guys for that extra 20,000 each year. So, you know, the CUA revolving count has helped with that. But I just, um, I do get nervous and I am forthright with things that that money has, has had a purpose and it should really remain with the Council on Aging. So I just. I think that's a future discussion uh, because there are many revolving funds in town and there's caps on the spending on those funds. Mm -hmm. No one's disputing the programs or the use of the money in the programs. What we're, we're talking about is the amount of expenditure uh, over and above, the amount of money is over and above what you can spend. And why is it sitting there? So you're doing, your programs are great. They absolutely help the seniors, but they have a cap which you cannot spend over. Yeah. So why are we allowing monies to sit in a fund we can over cap? That cap? If, that, if, you if we decided to upgrade that, correct. Well, but I don't think it's an upgrade. I think it's just raising an increase. what would be needed. Yeah, right. in, in, in other words, sure. But I we haven't done that yet. You right. haven't, and I just wanted to address my concern because that discussion has come up, and I just wanted to address and it. And it probably will continue to come up yeah. because unless the fund gets raised for legitimate reasons, then there's still an amount of money sitting over there that, like in other funds, could be used to offset some of the other costs in town for the taxpayers. And I and I do appreciate, and I and I certainly won't, don't want to get argumentative, but it that money, um, it's that money doesn't have to be raised. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. So having exactly. a cap only is legally what we can spend out of it. Yeah. I, and that was discussions with Sarah and I. What we were using right now. Yeah. Since we've taken those other uh, programs out of it and put their own separate account, we don't need it up at a hundred thousand because that's what we were spending to have two significant programs. That's what we were spending was up to a hundred thousand dollars each year. So we needed permission to use the money that was coming in to pay for bills related to that program. Well, now that she separated them from, and starting at a zero base, what was it, two, three years ago almost, right? Yeah. Um, there's money left over, but it's not, it, we don't raise and appropriate that money. It's there for the use of the council. It gets and, rolled and over. And that's how they were able to start the program so, about doing nightly meetings. And yeah, so right. our programs are yeah. growing. And so yeah. each year we'll, we'll address it with Sarah, and she's really good about you know talking with us that if we have to raise that cap to spend that money that was given to the Council on Aging specifically, then, then she's let, been really Let helpful. me assure you that at this point in time, this committee has not talked about moving anything out of revolving funds or looking for Thank them you. as a uh, source of income. Um, right now, I think the majority of us feel as though that may not be necessary. Uh, so it's you know, I want to assure you of that. I would, you know, I appreciate that they come from user fees and they support those programs. Mm -hmm. And um, there were no other questions on your budget. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, although I would just say that we did have some discussion about them. I don't think there's any current plan no. to utilize no. it for the FY20. So there may no. be more discussions about it yeah. later. Because yeah. it is, I mean, I Sarah had prepared something and it is kind of a, Strange to see estimated revenue for 2020 of 9,500, you know, it being half of what the expenses are projected to be for that revolving fund. So in a way, you're kind of spending down I, right. that. Because yeah. I understand that. your concern. I do yeah. understand that, and that's. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but yes. uh, Christine is right. Operating budget, and this was more a question, but not yeah. not something that. We we're we're going to make recommendations. I'm just figuring it out, so I like mm -hmm. to advocate early. So You're, yeah, and you do very <laughs> well. <laughs> but I, I'm I, a pit bull when it comes to the COA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and rightfully so. And rightfully so. You've done a very good job down there. Anything else? No, not really. Okay. I don't think so. Anybody else? No. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Carolyn. <laughs> Okay, um, on that paper I gave you um, where we were at, let's see, this is going to, this is going to Monday, all right. Yeah, <laughs> 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 so many pieces of paper. I, I know the work in progress listing. 
for today. Um, I would ask you going down the first section that has to do with general government. Um, item number one, we might as well ask Sarah <coughs> while she's here. With that? Account 135. Yeah. yeah. Account 135. Uh, although I, I, it's my understanding that in the revised budget that the town manager presented, they uh, reduced the full time request yes. to a part time request. Yes. Yep. <coughs> Chris, do you have an extra copy of what you're talking about that I can refer to? Or? No. No. Okay. Uh, we could make it quick copy. <coughs> Is this here? Yeah. That's okay. Well, here. We can, I can move this one. Is there a okay. job description for that position? May I use it to May I? Just do my presentation on the, the yeah. accounting question? Well, we didn't really want a full presentation, but... <laughs> Getting some more paper. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so I wrote up this memo and I'd like to, to read it to you, um, and then you can look at all of the information that I've attached um, afterwards. Um, so this is regards to the request for a procurement manager. I am requesting a position for a procurement manager. I have attached a job description to explain in detail what this individual would do. However, I think it is important to understand what is procurement and why procurement is so vital to the town of East Long Meadow. In Massachusetts, procurement is the acquisition of supplies or services, the disposition of surplus supplies, and real property acquisitions and dispositions by governmental bodies, in this case, the town of East Long Meadow. This type of procurement is subject to Massachusetts General Laws, MGL, Chapter 30B, Uniform Procurement Act. Procurement is al also includes design services for public building projects under MGL Chapter 7C, public building construction services under MGL Chapter 149, and public works construction services and construction materials under MGL Chapter 30, Section 39M, as well as there are certain procurements that are subject to separate statutory requirements. I have attached a letter and charts from the Office of the Inspector General that gives a quick guide to these procurement laws. The current structure of the town's government is that the majority of purchasing is done directly by the department. They are tasked with finding what they need and purchasing it or hiring. They are supposed to meet procurement laws at all times. The problem with this is that the procurement laws are very complex and specific. Even someone with many years of municipal experience within a department would have a hard time, especially since the statutory changes to Chapter 30B, which became effective November 7, 2016. Therefore, the state offers certification courses to enable purchasing officials to comply with all of these rules. Within the town side, there are 50 people who are authorized within their department to make procurement decisions, and there are 15 people on the school side. Within the entire purchase Within the entire employee population of just over 1,000 individuals, only two are Massachusetts Certified Public Purchasing Officials, MCPPOs. Pam Belair, the Assistant Superintendent for Business for ELPS, and myself. Therefore, there's a large population of employees making procurement decisions without knowledge of proper procurement laws. According to the Office of the Inspector General, if any contract or purchase is made in violation of any of the procurement laws, it is considered invalid. No payments may be made on an invalid contract, even if supplies have been delivered or work has been performed. This opens the town up to legal action, as well as poor relations with vendors. Since I became the Director of Municipal Finance two years ago this month, and have assumed the responsibility of Chief Procurement Officer, I have begun the process of improving the Town of East Long Meadows procurement. For example, I have changed some controls and added others. In the spring of 2018, for the first time, we held an auction of all surplus equipment. This ensured that the town promoted competition and fairness to produce the result that was in the best interest of the town. In May and June of 2018, I also rolled out the mandatory use of the state's combi system for the entire town. This system enables us to use state contracts and ensures we meet procurement law for any of those purchases. Since its inception, we have 27 buyers on combis who have made 219 orders under seven of the state's contracts, totaling $19,000. These types of changes have increased our compliance with the state's procurement laws. However, with the number of vendors we use and the dollar amount going through these vendors, it is just a drop in the bucket. 
please see the attached table. In the past 12 months, we have received two reviews from the Attorney General on claims that we did not follow procurement law in two instances. We have received at least another 10 inquiries from individuals or companies questioning our procurement. There's only a handful of people who know the documentation requirements of procurement and even less who understand that we must maintain that documentation for six years after the final payment on that procurement. Therefore, it is critical for the town to have a centralized location and process to ensure that we meet procurement laws. Many other communities within the state have created a procurement department, including our neighbor Longmeadow, who has a procurement manager. The objective of the procurement manager is to support all town and school departments in the procurement of quality goods and services at cost-effective prices while promoting fair competition. In addition to in addition to procurement, the procurement manager would monitor procurement practices by departments and facilities. Uh, excuse me, and facilitate contract administration to ensure compliance with applicable laws governing procurement of municipal supplies, services, equipment, and capital improvements involving public works, building construction, and design services. As the director of municipal finance, I would oversee everything. It takes one to two weeks of a full-time person to get the process set for a brand new procurement. If it is a recurring procurement, it takes one to two days. This is a significant amount of time that departments are currently spending, presuming they are doing the procurement properly. With the hiring of a procurement manager, we would be able to give a significant amount of time in departments for them to perform their normal duties, while also giving the town the benefit of uniformity and complete compliance with all procurement laws. I hope I have explained in enough detail the critical needs that the town of East Longmeadow has for a procurement manager. Just as we wouldn't want to show up to a fire without the proper equipment and training, we don't want to perform procurement without compliance. You are the chief procurement officer, correct? Yes, I am. And it was in your job description as finance director? It was. Is it still? Yes. Okay. The charter had set that as the town manager, but the town manager could delegate it to another individual and the town manager delegated to the director of finance. So when I became that officer, then I assumed that role as well. Okay. I have one just technical question. <laughs> what is what is the state law change that you're referring to, and, or what what did that so mean it, for? It was the Massachusetts Modernization Act, and it updated a lot of Massachusetts general laws, um, not just relating to procurement, but relating to pretty much all aspects of Massachusetts laws, um, and getting it, the laws more modern. Um, and so it changed, for instance, the procurement, it changed some of the thresholds, some of the requirements, um, things of that nature. Uh, some of the things are more complicated. So for example, when you're seeing, I have written about the public works construction services. They're like, oh, well, we're not, we're not constructing a new building with public works. No, that ref reflects anything that public works does that could be related to that. So if we were to paint the inside of the library, that falls under procurement laws. And there are certain requirements such as prevailing wage laws and additional laws that all impact that. So it's it's a very complicated area that needs a lot of expertise. Let's play what if. Sure. If the position is not recommended, may still be approved, I don't know. Uh, but if it weren't, you have $5,150 in for training seminars. Mm -hmm. Would that, is, is that specific to procurement or? It's um, for any of the training needed by my department. So myself as well as I have an assistant town accountant who does her annual required training. Um, and then I do have a payroll administrator and an accounts payable administrator. So depending on who is within our department. So if, um, if the procurement manager did not get approved, then I would use some of those funds to send my payroll administrator on some of the labor law changes and the payroll updates that have happened since the last time I was able to send her. Um, and those kinds of things to make sure that everybody gets the different areas and essentially takes turns. It's not enough money for everybody to do 
all the training that they need every year, yeah. but then I, I have to, to use all that. So if I were to able to have a procurement manager, I might have the payroll administrator wait another year before doing that kind of an update. Okay. I, I understand the training portion. Are, are any of these like continuing ed education yes. credits oh, for, yes. for oh, a type yes. of certification? Um, the majority of that is, yes. Okay. The, uh, in my position as the um, certified governmental accountant um, through Massachusetts, that requires um, annual education, um, which is paid through there, as well as the assistant town accountant. She does that same kind of annual education. Um, and then as the MCPPO, there are annual education requirements, so that's also paid for out of there. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I had a, let's see. The other question I had, so the travel, I, I noticed that there was 600 appropriated last year as of December 31st. There was no money used. Um, right. ha has any money been used or are you just putting that in there as a what if? No, um, some of the money has been used, but if you will recall, um, I was expecting my third <coughs> child in October, mm -hmm. so I wasn't going to go to the other side of the state <laughs> 10 months pregnant. Um, and then when I was on maternity oh. leave, I was not therefore going on training, so for half of that six months. And then my assistant town accountant was was assuming my responsibilities while, a lot of my responsibilities while I was on maternity leave, so it wasn't appropriate for her to be leaving the office to go to trainings when then we were down Needed somebody coverage. anyway. Right. So um, in the spring, we have been able to, to do a lot of those uh, to kind of catch back up to, to get to do our trainings. And our annual schooling is offered in March anyway for yeah. the accounting side, okay. March and June. And your capital outlay for furniture, yes. uh, is that in anticipation of the new person? Or yes. It is? Yes. Okay. So in um, previous budgets, um, we were able to um, purchase uh, new chairs and desks for the uh, staff. Um, and so that is in anticipation for the procurement person to have a, a seat and a desk. Okay. Jim, you had a question. I uh, just wanted to make sure I, I, I can't actually find it in the summary presentation from April 29th. Did, did you determine that you would reduce the full-time, additional full-time to a part-time? I, yes, in the, in the April 29th, yes. I put the procurement as a half time in order to try to help with the budgeting constraints. Yeah. I do feel that this position can be more than busy in a full time sure. um, option, but um, to try to at least um, help with the budget and to get a start somewhere. So I guess a, a question I would have then, uh, Sarah, is it looks like the budget between the requested amount and the revised amount only goes down by like $25,000, mm -hmm. yes. which is a kind of the, given the spreadsheet you gave us, just the amount of benefits, it was still, it, so right. I'm, I'm it doesn't seem to coincide so, with. Right. Um, as was asked at one of the last um, meetings, um, how many um, of the individuals had not had their um, adjustments due to the Collins Center, one of them was within my department. So that has since occurred and been finalized, and so that impacted the salary and offset some of the decrease due to the procurement um, manager. So you had another, another adjustment that needed to be made that wasn't in the draft? Mm -hmm. Yes, which had finalized between the first draft and then the, the presentation there. And I believe I had mentioned that I could think of a handful of people that were were still in that process that hadn't been finalized, and that was um, one of them was within my department. Are you aware if all the contractual increases have been finalized at this point in time? That's a question for Denise. Um, as far as as posted. All of those that have been um, approved have been posted. This is an ongoing process through the end of the year that people have anniversaries in May and April. April has not been done, May has not been done, because it, it means reviews and the whole process. So there so will be additional changes. Yes. How many uh, employees are affected by this? I don't offhand, I can, I can find that out. I know I have a list like on my calendar on the first day of yeah. the month as to who I have to review and stuff. Yeah, please mm -hmm. do. Okay. Do yeah. Another question? Mm -hmm. Yes. In our last discussion, uh, Denise, uh, yes. 
There were two positions that we're aware of that have not been uh, renewed. Do you know where we stand with those? It sounds like they're close to being finalized and what the impact would be on the financial side. I don't know what positions you're talking about. Well, that was the discussion we had with, uh, with uh, Sarah. Well, first is we need to know what's going to happen with HR, and the second is the police chief. His contract has not been renewed. His, his con uh, it's being extended. He has a letter into me to extend his contract, so uh, we will be doing that. Um, but that has to come to the council, actually. So what's the impact on the financial side? Um, as of right now, uh, there is no increase that's being discussed. Again, that's one of those that is outstanding. His contract ends in June, so I wouldn't, I would, wouldn't be doing that until the end of this month in an ideal world, or June. Um, uh, the other is HR. And HR, um, I have a contracted service that is, it will be beginning. Um, I don't have like the analytics of exactly how much it's going to cost because I in fact asked them to reduce some of the costs last week. It, it, um, I, I received it on Monday. Um, it will definitely be less than we have for HR now because if there will be no benefits paid. So the hourly rate is much higher, but we're reducing the number of hours that the position, I really don't feel that amount of time is needed. Um, the clerical side of it is being done um, by uh, an admin that we presently have for a stipend of $50 uh, a week, so that's an easy fix. Um, that is not really impacting, she's having a, a a good enough time to keep up with processing the paperwork. Um, I, I would like to try this contracted service and then put it out for RFP if in fact we feel that we can do it that way. It may be a more co cost efficient and actually manpower and space efficient way to, to address the HR needs. Yeah. You, you mentioned that in the past, uh, and it, uh, what my, my follow-up question would be, mm -hmm. the HR budget was budgeted for a, a full year for two staff members, which are no longer there. They haven't been there for many months. Uh, is there any returns to the town for those funds? On June 30th, there will be. Uh, there will be on June 30th, right. uh, but I've, I've again budgeted not knowing if we can do you know, a contracted service. We mm -hmm. need to, to keep those positions. I understand, but you must know what the amount of, is, amount of money is. We can do a calculation, but again, that goes to being offset with the with this contractual service right. as well. Well, that's in the future. Do you anticipate doing that, uh, say, in July, or are you going to do it? Oh, no, it's, within it's this starting like next mm -hmm. week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so you'll be using the funds that are yes. currently yes. in the fiscal 19 budget for yes. that under human resources. Correct. For the balance Clear. of the year. But again, we have a period of six months, which was a blackout period, mm -hmm. where no fees were paid. Mm -hmm. And no uh, monies were paid to anybody. Oh. Sarah please has keep, some enlightenment Please keep here. in mind that when individuals did leave, we <coughs> did have to pay out any vacation time that they had accrued at that point. So even if their date was earlier, they could have had however many weeks of vacation still to pay out. So it's not necessarily that we had all of that extra, as well as the stipend that we've been paying for that one admin has been coming out of that HR-related salaries budget in order to pay the stipend for somebody doing HR duties. So we do have that. Yeah. Um, I can do a figure to, to calculate out how much remains at this point, if that would be helpful. Sure. <laughs> I'm um, certainly that that's a number that's not that difficult to get yeah. minusing out the contract um, but it, it, it's all fiscal 19 I impact at this exactly, point in time exactly. and any anything left over is going to flow into the undesignated fund balance so right. Right. you know correct. Or, right yeah, yeah. Yeah. it would just or to be, help balance the budget yeah um, if you if you settle a an agreement with them, I won't say contract, if you settle an agreement mm -hmm. with Human Resources, mm -hmm. you would have a ballpark figure of how that's going to impact the Human Resources line item. Absolutely. Um, and would you be able to provide that yes. to us? Yes, I um, would at some, Or provide it to the Council at some point in time? It's down to a certain number of hours per week yeah. uh, and, and a certain rate, which they've come down a little on the rate. Okay. Um, I've also, 
um, asked for a number to um, have them do a larger search for an HR um, person, but I'm holding off on that, not knowing if that's really the direction that we want to go, or it, would we prefer to, or feel that we can address the HR needs of the town using a contract. Yeah. Does it include the schools, or the schools are separate? Um, s some of the things, uh, we don't do the school's hiring, Yeah. but there are some things that are, uh, the benefit piece is absolutely all done by um, Kareem, um, okay. who has also taken on some of the family medical leave. So there are certain things that are, they, there's some crossover. Can be reorganized, right. kind of. Correct. Yeah. And that's that's part of having a an organization that, you know, we don't have policies and procedures I understand there were some a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We have no record of them, actually. Yeah. So uh, to have a company that they've got a library of them, I'm sure, and we yeah. can say, can you give us a policy on this, and we start adopting all those policies, was okay. something the HR director had been um, hired to do and did not accomplish. So yeah. um, that, that, again, may be an added cost, but might still be cheaper if you're not giving them health insurance benefits. <laughs> right, so, right. Um, it, it'll be a, a little bit of a work in progress, um, but certainly I can give you what I expect the, the projected cost for through the end of this year. That okay. would be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, <coughs> I have a question comment. about that with the FY20 budget. So yeah. it looks like it's kind of in a state of flux. The it 20 is. budget has the two people for the okay, HR and it's space. budgeted that way. <coughs> you indicated you're getting close to doing a contract and trying to see how that will work and yes. whether or not that would fill the bill. And are, is, is there an, going to be enough of a difference between the two, your estimated cost of that contract and the cost that's been budgeted for the HR department that would make sense to adjust the HR budget? Or are you kind of holding off because this is a test period and you may have to go back to just getting people and hiring them as employees? That's exactly my concern. Uh -huh. And and the second piece of that is uh, the reason, one of the reasons it was kept with those two positions at the same salary as last year is that I've been told that one of the reasons we're not attracting somebody is that the HR director position is under um, uh, the salary is is not competitive, so we may have to do something where we're doing it, less. Is it one of the ones that the Collins Center looked at? Um, I it, can't recall. It is, but I, it's now two years old, and the salary has stayed the same. <laughs> okay, I had just um, a comment to make, uh, Sarah. In your rationale, mm -hmm. you reference twenty fifty people on the town side and 15 people on the school side who whose job description allows them to make procurement decisions and sometimes without knowledge of proper procurement laws. Uh, just from a legal point, because I know that our line item for legal has is burgeoning, uh, that remark makes me nervous. As am I. So I, as the Director of Finance, I would think you'd want to take steps, regardless of the future of a procurement manager, to make sure these folks have some kind of professional development. Training. Training. Yeah. So there aren't any missteps that we get, you know, cited for down the road. Right. Um, and I did provide um, some training with the combines training. So we gave a very high level overview about what procurement is, which many of the people in the room did not understand what even that term meant. Um, and so we're trying to teach as we go. Um, but in my department, it's uh, my staff are wonderful and they do help me so that then we do give trainings on how to use combis and, and those kinds of things and the state has been great at having people come in to help show that but having that many different people that can order stuff for instance um that they're not thinking of this as procurement they're just thinking hey i need, I need whatever right. and not understanding how the procurement rules also look at it in, in total so saying oh, you're buying five chairs, but you're buying five chairs. Now that added up to a threshold that now triggers procurement law, but they're looking at it just in a bubble. So having uh, part of having this procurement manager would be to help 
to prevent that bubble kind of effect happening. And where possible, I do try to educate, um, but it's also hard to get that many people to. to I'm, all I'm not be necessarily educated. suggesting that you take on the professional development, but somebody takes on the, right. and the, the training. The I was saying of the of office that. of the inspector general will can do that. Right. Do they, they have, have, do they they have people trained somewhere? with because like the attorney they, general they come they out do. and talk about the. They do, people. and it is. It's not cheap to do all of that either. But I mean, yeah. we could definitely do that. I don't think it's the. Does the state charge? Uh, yeah. Yes, you have to to pay for these courses. You, you're earning well, I'm, I'm saying more of a, a workshop seminar for employees to give them, yes. you know, the bones of procurement law, yeah. and. Uh, at least it give them a level of education that would be the the basic uh, procurement uh, course that they offer is a three day course. It's a full three days, um, and they only offer it at a couple of locations, and none of which are here. But so uh, I think you're missing my point, Sarah. Okay. I'm, the attorney general sends people out to talk to groups, mm -hmm. be it municipal groups or from say the collector's mm -hmm. office, the assessing group, whatever, and they don't charge as long as you provide the venue. Mm -hmm. And you get a group of 20 people, 25 people, and they speak and, and give you the the broad outline, you, and generally they have handouts which yep. help to educate people. Uh, so I'm, I guess I'm asking you, does the Office of the Inspector General, who over, oversees the procurement law, do they offer that? Have you investigated that? I have not investigated that recently, no. Okay. Okay. Can so I that also, might be a possibility. I also want to caution that in, in I, I think Sarah has experienced the exact same thing. Um, we've inherited a culture here of everybody has done their own procurement and mm -hmm. it's breaking that whole mindset that in fact yesterday I had a conversation with a department head who is one that does major purchases and I said now remember you need to follow procurement law on this you're going to either go to combines or whatever and and the answer was well of course but you know I'm a big picture guy <laughs> <laughs> and and I just need to get the stuff done so some of that is um, you try to bring them to the water <coughs> or to drink yeah. you have to have them come back and and be reinforced as to you have to follow these laws but sometimes it's catching that you know it's not it's not dishonesty or lack of wanting to to follow the rules it's mm -hmm. wanting to get it done yeah so some of that is very time consuming to say okay so so and so purchased this how does it follow which then falls to the procurement officer to be looking at all the purchases and make sure sometimes it's after the fact yeah. So there's a lot of training that does need to continue on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or I would do an, yeah. I, I I don't look at it as liberally, I guess, as as what you're stating. I would either get them trained or I would pull back the authority to purchase yeah. until you can uh, Right. And and so in order to pull I back mean, the I've authority to right. purchase then, then I need more well or more to checks to and balances to, because to, to Again, I go back to the legal side. You know, I've seen some missteps yeah. in the past few years that go to um, an individual needing a better understanding of how to proceed, how, how, to proceed, how yeah. things get done. Mm -hmm. And so I would, um, yeah. I think some of that needs to happen regardless of. Well, yeah. Uh, Not yeah, everybody uh, has to be a certified, mm -hmm. labeled procurement right. officer, but they do need to have. As, as Denise said, have a knowledge of what they're mm -hmm. doing, and plan plan procurement accordingly. If you're going to need it in May, s start looking at it in February, <coughs> and get quotes and and mm -hmm. do what you're supposed to rules, do. That's right. exactly uh, follow the rules. And if I may, through the chair, uh, yeah. what I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm I'm thinking through a process that since it's it's delegated to you as the chief procurement officer and within the powers of the charter. As the chief procurement officer, uh, why can't those 15 school members report to 
the other chief procurement officer, which is Pam, Pam Blair. They they do. Do. So all you have is a central point of focus, but not I, 15 people. But I am technically, as the chief procurement officer, I am responsible for everybody. So I am responsible for what Pam does as well. Now, Pam luckily is a certified procurement, and she does a great job. So on the school side, they've, they've adjusted <coughs> their process to try to minimize, which is why there's only 15 people instead of the huge number that it could be and they do do a great job so in that in the school sense I am involved very little there's only occasionally that I get involved because she does do a great job and she's also certified on the town side is where we need a whole lot more help and we we have a lot bigger risk of of being improper and in non-compliance. So trying to help with that, I felt that the most efficient way was to have a procurement manager who is somebody who is dedicated to doing procurement all the time, living and breathing it all the time, and therefore alleviating time in departments for them to do their other needs, um, but therefore ensuring compliance, ensuring uniformity, and all of that. Um, if my position is not approved at this budget, I will be coming again next year. Um, but in that meantime, then I will have to do some additional trainings for everyone. But as Denise said, it's hard getting everyone to understand that just because you knew the rule 10 years ago does not mean you understand the rule today right. and that you do still need it. And, and to understand and comprehend that, especially if it's a department that doesn't do, sometimes doesn't do it all the time or only does it in a certain time of year. Um, and trying to get everybody to do that. But I will try to keep the town in as much compliance as I can. It is just very difficult without having enough manpower to properly do it. Right. So they, they don't run it past you. Let's take, for example, um, IT is going to be purchasing Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. Now that purchase is for the school. However, IT is its oh, own okay. separate department. When he goes about, I don't know if he'll do an RFP on it, mm -hmm. but if he does, would he reference you? Would he ask you? In the past, no, because it's a new position. Because as I said, I've been in that position for the past two years. So it's yeah. still getting the culture to remember that they need to, to come and work with me. Now, for the Chromebook specific example, because it is related to the school, um, Pam is usually very involved in that and okay. she has the certifications. I did just talk to them the other day about, hey, what's going on? But it's me having to reach out to say, hey, remember, you're supposed to involve me for not just that department, but for other things. Hey, let's, let's have a conversation. But if they're making a purchase and I don't know that they're about to make that, then sometimes I don't find out so till you after can't, the fact. Yeah. Right. So then I'm asking where are the quotes before I pay the invoice because that's another area where I'm able to, to put a stop right. is before we pay the invoice. Hey, this invoice, this should trigger. Where are your quotes? What kind of process did you do? And a lot of the times departments are struggling to pull it all together, and this is still within this fiscal year, never mind the, the time restrictions by the state that we could um, be in trouble. So yeah. it's still a work in progress. I'm still trying to get things better, but I yeah. thought this would be the most efficient yeah. way. Ahead, just, just something to throw out, and it's probably not workable, but I mean, if you have a handful of people that you trust, mm -hmm. that you feel do know uh, the, the policies <coughs> and procedures, could you kind of like delegate others that you're not so sure about to use them as their mentor as opposed to, you know, having to every have everything fly through you? I, I suppose that's something I could talk to the town manager about the possibility, but remember, none of this is part of their job description, you know, and so getting them so to do that as, on top as of other their, duties their, as, other, as required. their other areas, and they don't report to me either. Um, right, and I, so and you wouldn't be able to, uh, although your function as procurement gives you a town-wide authority that... It does. Um, but I, I just throw it out as... Mm -hmm something. I, the only other thing I had is if you're able to provide us uh, an, uh, the updated uh, personnel budget for the accountants uh, department. Oh, I forgot that today. I'm I, so sorry. Yep. Right. yep. Okay. I, yeah. Have, have we discussed procurement enough? The only question I have in my mind is that I would assume it would be department heads and not clerical support staff that was doing any purchasing. I would think it would have to be signed off by the department head. Signed off for sure. Signed off for sure, but 
um, some departments, depending how they're structured, they might have their their right hand person or their administrative person go and do all that gather and say did you do it yep i did it and then okay uh, take a look at it they might not be there saying let me go through every aspect of it and then it's just looking at that department not that the department next to me also made a purchase from that same vendor that now is triggering overall for us to have an impact same thing with the school the school is using that vendor I'm sorry yeah. if i may through the chair i haven't had a chance to look through all your documentation you provided today sure. but just there's common sense things that jump out at me. A lot of this is within the control of our town manager. The department heads report to her. All she has to do is write a, a draft saying no procurement will be done without approval from Sarah. End of story. If they do it, then they're accountable to the town manager. The same thing with the schools. They don't have to use our, our, our if I remember correctly, the charter, how, it, how it's read. They, they can, I think is the word in the charter where it says they can use our procurement. If they choose to, but but they may, or they but they don't have to. But again, your relationship with Pam Blair, and Denise's relationship with uh, Denise. I mean, uh, Gordon. It, it sounds like it, I mean it's just a discussion to be had, uh, a draft to be uh, produced, and then it's all centralized. End of story. Correct. Um, the problem that I have with that is that procurement is not my only responsibility. That's right. Um, and so. Um, having the manpower to be able to, if it all comes into my department to do every piece of procurement, now we're going to wind up with a bottleneck problem. And now we're going to have departments who need stuff but can't get to it, can't get it all because it bottlenecks in my department. Time. There's just not enough time to be able to do, excuse me, all of the other responsibilities that we do have. Right, but this um, was delegated to you through the town manager, yes. so it's now part of your job description. Right, which is why as part of that duty, I am asking for another person to be able to help me right. with that in order to fulfill that requirement. But to follow Chris, Chris's recommendation, why can't you point up, delegate to key people that you trust that know this, and then you just be the funnel at the end, just a general check off, uh, a check mark. And so yeah, that, you, you've yeah. done the and due diligence, what, boom, think, done deal. Yeah, I think Sarah has already told us it's a work in progress. Right. It's mm -hmm. something Correct. that she's trying to create a, you know, standard operating procedure for departments that have to do procurement, be it for building materials, be it for Chromebooks, be it for uh, furniture, projects. whatever, yeah. whatever. So, um, <coughs> yeah, I think... I think we've talked this one. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I would like to take a brief recess, if that's okay with everybody, sure. just like maybe five or ten minutes, yep. and uh, get back to our stretch our legs. Okay. It's quarter. I have just a little after quarter past eleven. Let's reconvene at twenty-five past. Okay. Meaning, we reconvening the meeting at eleven twenty-five. And maybe eleven twenty-eight. <laughs> um, all right, we have heard from several people in the course of this morning. It's totally unanticipated, but uh, this is good. We did clear up some. So I had as uh, number eight to begin calculations and recommendations. Um, and I had no. I I think that. As to today's schedule, I think we've proceeded through enough stuff to... Jim, I want to ask you, would you be able to, um, once you've got enough information now, do you think to just kind of do that We can do a cheat sheet, it? sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't you think we... Do we what I had just sent to uh, my own calculation, based on some discussions we had had of potential changes, taking the the sources and uses and just adjusting that by, yeah. by those items um, but we've made changes so but yeah. it would give us an, uh, an idea of what the what it looks like the new surplus uh, right. would yeah. look like what our new target is right. or uh, uh, right what we need to eliminate right. well working from the bottom up yeah right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I sure I'd be happy to for okay. for Friday um, I was considering that Friday's not a good day for me all right. And I was thinking we could possibly cancel Friday's meeting. And because Monday we're going to have two of the department heads here. Mm -hmm. And following that, then we can uh, 
go into more in depth. I think a lot of our questions have been answered. And who's we'll coming for you on Bruce Monday? will be oh, Bruce, yes. Bruce will be coming on his capital projects and then we'll have um, the dispatch uh, at eleven. Scott Burns. Oh, Scott, Scott okay. Burns on Monday. So um, So do you want to uh, do you want to cancel Friday? Well, does the committee feel? It's confident? not good for you. It's probably not good. For <laughs> 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 well, I could not use the time to catch up on 400 pages of reading. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, and uh, I think we'd be more ready to go into more in-depth discussions um, on Monday. So. Uh, so we'll so keep working, but it won't be formal. <laughs> so Monday right, the 13th. Right, right. So I mean. Try to, try to review everything that we've done mm -hmm. at this point in time. I'm sorry, what time Monday? Monday at 10. Monday could, at 10. Could we make it 10.30? Only because uh, I have some standing things in the morning, and <coughs> I, I, I made it for 10.30, but I'd, I'd okay. have to kind of cut yeah, it short. Yeah, 10.30 is better for me because I need to be at the airport. Can we change it to 10.30? I haven't posted it yet. That's Monday's okay. meeting. Yeah, that's Monday's meeting. Yeah, well, I'll just check with the library. That's us. So. Right. Okay. So 10.30? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay. okay. That would work better for me. I need to be at the airport at night. <laughs> you, you bring somebody to Yeah, well my wife's traveling this time, oh, so. Okay. <laughs> so Monday, May 13 at 10.30. Yeah. <coughs> and you'll get an agenda to me for tomorrow? Is that okay? For, for Monday. Monday. For Monday, I will. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we're canceling Friday's right. meeting. I hadn't posted that yet. Okay. So. Then we don't need to worry about that. Right. Um, next Wednesday, the 15th, after <coughs> we, I'm assuming, Jim, that you will also be at the, the public hearing to hear any public input on yeah, the budget. Yeah, I'm pla planning on it. Okay. Right. And I know that we'll Tom and Mike have to be there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, do we have to have our... <coughs> Our meetings at one o'clock on. I'm thinking we need a meeting on the fifteenth, Wednesday the fifteenth. Would three thirty satisfy? Okay. Can anybody do three? Or is that I just is that, that tough, Mike? Mornings are better for me. But yeah. I mean, I, I can do it, but I, I generally need to be able to leave by about f five. If you guys don't mind me coming in my rowing gear. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> Well, that I, uh, would be interesting. Yeah. How are you leaving the boat? <laughs> <laughs> At a boathouse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, well, what's better for the 15th? Would Can it be I 1 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Can I let you know what my schedule is on the 15th? Just so um, yeah. I, I am free up until 2.30. Yeah, so 10, so 10 o'clock on, on the 15th would be the best. Yeah. All right. Okay. For me as well. Wednesday. Okay, uh, so with that said, I think we have accomplished a great deal today, gotten some questions answered, learned a few things about procurement and revolving Council on Aging funds and so forth. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> and I second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 See, okay. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs>